Welcome to my channel folks. In today's video, we are going to see how to set up the newly launched SFTP for Amazon S3. What this service does is it allows you a simple SFTP protocol to be used to communicate to your S3 buckets. Earlier, you need an uh, CLI that is a AWS CLI or you need to create a pre-signed URL for your third party users to communicate with your S3 bucket or you need to provide them an IAM user or a role that they can use to communicate with your bucket. But with this SFTP service, what happens is you create an user for your third party users and you also create a key for those users and using the user ID and the key, they will be securely able to communicate with your bucket. As you can see here on the left hand side, you have your client that is communicating with the server on the right hand side by using the private key public key or authentication channel and all the commands and the data that has been transferred between the client and the server is encrypted by this key exchange that has happened earlier. So let us go ahead and see how we can set it up in our account. Here in this GitHub article, I have documented all the steps that is required to go ahead and set up this uh, a demo in your account. The first prerequisite that we need is an S3 bucket. And you can see here that I'm going to create a bucket name which is called as SFTP destination test bucket. So let us go ahead and do that. And this is the bucket name that I'm going to use. I'm going to click on create. You don't have to need any special permissions or privileges on your bucket. Just a generic bucket should be good enough for us. As you can see here, this bucket is empty right now. So the first prerequisite is done. The next one is we need a Linux client, uh, preferably because uh, the SFTP client is available there by default. And if you have a Windows machine, then you can use the WinSAP uh, a package to send your uh, files to the S3 service. And I already have a couple of uh, servers running. I have a Linux VM and also a Windows VM. Make sure that you are able to connect to it and uh, these two VMs can uh, have internet connectivity so that they can send files and receive files uh, from the S3 service. So that is the prerequisite there. And then next one is having an IAM role and a particular trust relationship is required. So I have also mentioned the uh, uh, trust relationship that is required here is this one. So I'm just going to copy it. But let us go ahead and create the IAM role also from the beginning. So I'm going to create a new role. And for now, I'm going to choose it as an EC2 role. But let us go ahead and change it later. And for this role, I want to give S3 full access because uh, our users should be able to add or remove objects from this uh, using this uh, permissions. So I'm just going to add, choose that S3 full access, click on next. Just going to review it. I'm just going to call the role as SFTP role so that we remember which role that we have created. So our role is created. I'm just going to click on that. And when you go to trust relationship, as of now, it is on ec2.amazon.com. But for SFTP service to work, we need to change it to transfer.amazonaws.com. So I'm just going to change that one now. Get the trust relationship, just changing it and update the trust policy. Now we have done with the other prerequisite that is setting up the IAM role also. So let us go ahead and begin creating the SFTP service itself. So if you come here and type SFTP and we'll be taken to the home page. Click here, create server. And if you want to have a very customized domain name for your SFTP service, then you can have a Route 53 alias for it. Or if you have your own DNS, then you can point that DNS to the SFTP endpoint also. For this demo, I'm not going to do that. We'll see that in a different demo. For now, let us see how to use the default endpoint itself. And for user ID management, I'm just going to say, use the service managed one. This way it might be easier to get started. And once you are familiar with it, then you can have customized API gateways so that you can authenticate each and every request. For the logging role, you can leave it as empty as for the moment and just go ahead and click on create server. So our server is getting created. Usually it takes about a couple of minutes for the server to come online. Meanwhile, if I go ahead and click on this one, it shows me all the properties that we have selected. And here you see there are no users are there. So we will go ahead and create a new user who will be accessing this SFTP service. So I'm just going to call this as SFTP test user. And the, if you remember, we created a role called SFTP role and I'm going to assign that role. So that this role gives the user a permission to add or remove objects from the SFTP server. So to which bucket we want to give permissions to this user? We remember we created a, a specific bucket called as SFTP test bucket, destination test bucket. Yep, yeah, that's the one I'm going to choose. And there are now uh, no particular folders we want to give them or restrict permissions to. So I'm just going to give the entire bucket privileges uh, for those users. 
So here is the public key that we need to assign to this user. And the easiest way to generate the public key is from your Linux server or if you have PuttyGen, you can do that also. Uh, in this demo, I'm going to show you how to do that using a Linux server. So if you have a Linux machine, all you have to do is to create a key is ssh hyphen keygen. That, that should be the command. And then I'm going to say the passphrase is going to be null. And then the file name that I want to say is hyphen f test sftp key. The entire command is there in the GitHub article. So if you want, you can go ahead and look, have a look how to create your keys. So if I do ls l, you will have two keys. This is the public, I mean, this is the private key and this is the public key. So this is the public key that we need to put it into the GUI. So I'm just going to open this keys. And remember, since uh, we are putty screen is small, you will have uh, enter characters here. So I'm just going to copy this into my notepad so that uh, I can go ahead and edit it into a single line and update it there. So this is what I'm talking about. You can just remove all this. So the entire thing should be in one single line now. So I'm going to copy this now and put it into my browser there. So let us paste it here. So that is the public key that has been added and click on add now. By this time our server would have usually gotten started but it, it still says starting. So we have done all the steps that are necessary to go ahead and test our connectivity now. So let us just wait for the server to come online. Now as you can see here our server has come online so we can go ahead and try to connect to the server from our CLI now. Let us copy the endpoint of our server. This is the endpoint where our SFTP server is available and you can see here the username is here and then the destination for this uh, user is going to be this location that is the home directory or the root directory of that bucket itself. So if you are in an, a Linux machine, it is very easy to make an SFTP connection. So remember, this is the server where we created our keys. So I'm just going to go ahead and say SFTP and then the user hyphen I, the key is test key. This is the private key. So, and then the username that we created is, if you remember, it is SFTP test user, SFTP test user. At, so let us paste the server name now and if everything is done correctly we should be able to get it connected now let us go ahead and accept the keys yep we got connected if i do ls if an ls it should not it should say that the folder is empty because as of now there are no files now that i have moved some files let us do and execute the files again so you can see here there are three files i'm going to put a file here input and I'm going to say welcome to mystic world that is the first file I'm going to upload and you can see here that it's got uploaded let us go ahead and check it in our s3 bucket now so let us refresh our bucket now and we should be able to see and file anytime here probably we are in the wrong bucket I'm just going to go to the test, test destination so you can see here this is the welcome to mystic world is the bucket uh, file that we uploaded and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go do one more file and then let us try to do it from a windows server as well and i'm going to put the next file as galaxy demo and it is called already got uploaded let us go ahead and see let me refresh this yeah there you go that is how you create a linux client and upload files to your sftp server let us see if we can do this from windows now here we are in the windows server and i have copied over my private key remember if you are using ssh then you need to use putty gen to convert it into a ppk key and uh, if you are a WinSCP user you should be familiar with it already so i have downloaded WinSCP also so let us go ahead and configure it now so the first thing is we are going to put in our server name and then the user that is our username is sftp test user and for password we are going to create the private file so under ssh you will find authentication here we are going to choose our private key so click ok and click on login so the first time it is going to ask you do you want to accept this user as a known server i'm going to say yes and it is going to do the key authentication and it is going to list my remote directory remember the two files that we already have so I've just created one more temporary file so that we can upload something there. So under desktop, we have this demo server and then I'm just going to drag and drop this file and click on OK. So the timestamp was the problem but should not be OK. Let us go ahead and say skip. And we got it uploaded. Let us go ahead and check in our bucket whether this file has been successfully uploaded. So let us refresh this bucket now. And there you see test from Windows Server or TXE because 
the SFTP client was not able to push the exact timestamp that was created there to this bucket. So that was the error we see, but the file got uploaded. So if you set your timestamp correctly on the server and it synchronizes with the SFTP service also properly, then you will not get that error. But this is a demo, I didn't do that. But in any case, this is how you configure SFTP service in your account. If you have any problems in following this instructions, go ahead and put them in the comment section. If you are, know a better way of doing it, go ahead and put in the comment section. Let us learn from each other. Thanks for watching. Happy learning.